Hello and welcome to this video on fit statistics for structural equation models in the M plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm a statistical consultant and instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistical tutorials. On Tuesday I usually talk about issues related to the M plus software and on Thursdays I talk about more general issues in multivariate statistics, including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level analysis, and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. In this video, I want to show you fit statistics in the M plus software when you run a path model, a confirmatory factor model, or a structural equation model, and I'll explain what those fit statistics mean for any given model. And I'll begin with a model here that did not fit so well. So here you can see that we have a chi-square test of model fit in the output in M+. That's part of the uh, M plus output on model fit information that you find when you run a path model or a factor model or a structural equation model. And this chi-square test of model fit tests the null hypothesis that the model fits exactly in the population. Or we could say that the model implied covariance and mean structure is in line with the observed covariance and mean structure. And so that null hypothesis here is rejected if we're testing at an alpha level of 0.05 because the chi-square statistic, which is given here, is highly significant, uh, has a very small p-value. So if we're testing at an alpha or significance level of 0.05, then you can see that this p-value is a lot smaller than 0.05. So the null hypothesis of exact model fit is rejected. The model does not reproduce the observed covariance and or mean stru structure adequately. There's a significant discrepancy between the model implied structure and the observed structure. You can also see that the chi-square statistic is very large relative to the degrees of freedom. It's actually more than 10 times as large. And ideally, we would like to see a chi-square statistic or chi-square value that is about the size of the degrees of freedom. That would be indicative of a good model. And then you would also get a p-value that is larger and non-significant. So uh, you can think about this uh, or roughly so to say when the chi-square statistic equals the degrees of freedom or is smaller than the degrees of freedom then you'll have a well-fitting model you'll get a good p-value when the chi-square statistic is uh, much larger than the degrees of freedom then um, the model will not look so good in terms of this p-value. Furthermore in M plus you get a statistic that indicates approximate or close fit, the RMSEA or root mean square error of approximation is the next statistic that is provided here. The estimate gives the point estimate of the RMSEA and then below that is a 90% confidence interval for the RMSEA as well as a p-value for the null hypothesis that the RMSEA will be or that the RMSEA is smaller than or equal to a 0.05 in the population. And so you can see here that the estimate of the RMSEA is 0.144, which is not good either. This is a bad RMSEA. The RMSEA should be uh, 0.05 or smaller. That's what people, people typically like to see for a well-fitting model. And you can see also the 90% confidence interval does not include the desirable boundary of 0.05. It's uh, the lower limit of the 90% confidence interval is above 0.05. And then obviously the upper limit also is above 0.05. So it's not looking good. And the p-value for the null hypothesis test that the RMSEA is smaller than or equal to 0.05 in the population is also significant at the 0.05 level. So this hypothesis is also rejected and um, or the hypothesis of close fit, so to say, is also rejected. So the RMSEA also shows that the model does not fit well, which is no surprise given that the chi-square value was so large um, uh, for the degrees of freedom. And then the CFI and TLI are incremental fit indices that evaluate the fit of the model 
our target model relative to a baseline model, the so-called independence model. You can see that uh, M plus gives a chi-square test of model fit for the baseline model as well. So this chi-square here tests a model that assumes no covariances among the observed variables. So a model where we would only estimate variances for the observed variables, but no covariances. And so that model results in an even worse chi-square statistic 821 versus 146 for our model. So this obviously is even worse. So, so no model at all, assuming that, or no covariance structure model at all, where we would assume there are no relationships between the variables. That fits even worse than our model in which we proposed at least some structure for the covariances. And so the CFI TLI, they evaluate the chi-square and DF for the baseline independence model versus the chi-square test for our target model. And so then in these indices, so say these indices tell us how much better our target model is than the independence model. These indices roughly range between zero and one, not exactly, but roughly where zero indicates that our model is no better than the baseline model and one would indicate that our model is a lot better. And so they should be, for a good model, they should be above 0.95. Uh, typically, that's what people would say, or above 0.97 even. Here in this case, you can see they look poor or indicate poor fit relative to the baseline model. So our model is not that much of an improvement over the baseline model. Um, and that's what they tell us here because they're lower than 0.95. Then finally, we also get the standardized root mean square residual, which is a summary measure of the standardized residuals. The residuals look at the difference between the observed covariances and the model implied covariances. And um, here specifically, we would be looking at standardized residuals, so so-called correlation residuals or residuals in a correlation metric. And so this gives us the average residual for that correlation residual matrix. And so 0 0.15 is also not a good value, which indicates that the average residual covariance was substantial. And this means our model did not do a good job explaining the covariances in the data when the average residual is so high. For the SRMR, we would also like to see a value that is close to zero, like for the RMSEA. So something that's 0.05 or smaller is usually considered to be adequate or appropriate for the SRMR measure. Here we are far above that uh, desired threshold of 0.05. So that would confirm that this model is not a good fit. So here you have a very clear cut case of a model not fitting. And I also to end this video on a positive note, I fit a better model to these data to show you what it looks like when a structural equation model fits well, so you don't have to be sad. And so let's take a look at that also. So this was a one factor model and one factor was not enough to adequately describe the covariances of these indicators. We needed actually three factors. And so here you can see the fit statistics for a three factor model fit to the same data, a three factor model was more appropriate. And you can see that here the chi-square statistic now is barely larger than the degrees of freedom. And so that results in a um, good p-value of 0.31. So here the null hypothesis of exact model fit does not have to be rejected. The model is not rejected by the chi-square statistic. That's a good sign. And then also you can see the RMSEA estimate, estimate now is close to zero. It is below 0.05 with a value of 0.02. The 90% confidence interval ranges from zero to 0.066. And the probability for the null hypothesis of close fit is 0.82. So the hypothesis of close fit also is not rejected, meaning um, we can assume that in the population or the data, so they are in line with the hypothesis that RMSEA is smaller than or equal to 0.05 in the population. Now, the question is, is this test super useful when you already have a non-significant p-value for the chi-square, then you probably wouldn't care about the close fit p-value 
um, at all because the chi-square already shows that the model fits well. You can also see now that the CFI and TLI indices are very close to 1.0, which they should be for a good model. So now our chi-square for our target model is much lower than the chi-square value for the independence model, which hasn't changed obviously because it's the same data set, same variables, and so therefore the independence model chi-square will be the same regardless of whether we fit one factor or three factors because that's, that stays the same model. And so you can see seven is a lot less than 821. And uh, even when we take into account the degrees of freedom, the baseline model is a, looks a lot worse the ratio of chi-square to degrees of freedom here looks a lot worse than the ratio of chi-square to degrees of freedom here. And as a result, CFI and TLI, which consider both the chi-square values and the degrees of freedom here, look really good for this model. So they would also suggest that this is a very well-fitting model. And finally, our standardized root mean square residual at the very bottom of the fit statistics is now also uh, much better. It's close to zero with a value of 0.014. Remember that previously it was 0.14 or 0.15. And so this is a lot smaller indicating that now the average residual is very close to zero. And um, this means that our correlations in the data or covariances are now very well explained. There's not a large average residual left after we fit our factor model. And so that's a good sign. So that would also um, indicate good model fit. So this is an example of a model that you could report probably if, if there are no other issues with this model, um, such as improper solutions or something else that doesn't work out. But if this is uh, also looking good in terms of the parameter values and it makes sense, then this would be a model that you could use, so to say, and sleep well at night, whereas the previous model did not fit at all. And you should not have used the parameters of the previous model because that was a totally disastrous fit. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about fit statistics and the M plus output for such statistics. If you did, then please hit the like button for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, uh, free workshops and other workshops that I offer through Quantfish and I'll see you next time.